a couple of little sample sheets that I'm going to get you to do. So the first one is this one, and I'm sure some of you have probably done this before with me. Um, and I know it's it's not very complicated, but it's actually quite a good little exercise to do. Hopefully you can all see that on screen. Um, whereby this is just a normal gray scale. This is just using Payne's gray. And all I've done is I've gone for a very dilute version of Payne's gray and made a little swab and then gradually started to darken it until using neat Payne's gray. Uh, equally, this one is um, crimson, so just using red. This one's French ultramarine, and this one's transparent yellow. Okay, so all I want you to do, just very quickly, if you can, for the next sort of five minutes or so, is if I get a brush, I'll do it alongside. Is just for the Payne's Grey one first. Is take a bit of Payne's Grey, and um, let me do it on my palette here, so I can show you the palette. So you're gonna to start to put some water, obviously, and I'm not gonna teach you how to mix paint, but this is just to kind of get an idea of why tone is so difficult within watercolor. And if you ever wondered why watercolor palettes are white, um, it's because white is the easiest um, uh, surface to mix the color on. If you did it on a gray or a black or whatever, you would never really understand the true color that you're gonna get. So, I'm going to take a little bit of um, Payne's Grey. This is just Payne's Grey on my brush. And I'm going to put it into the, into the water there. Now, if you look at that against the, um, hopefully you can see that, against the white of the palette, you can see the grey pretty clearly, can't you? So what I need to do there to do my first swab is add even more water so that it gets even more and more dilute and transparent. So what you're really looking for is, um, a tone of color where you can see the palette through it almost clearly. You can see a little bit of the paint gray, but almost it's pretty much just white. And that will be your first tone. Okay, so I'm adding a bit more water, a bit more water. So you need to be very sparse with the amount of water, uh, sorry, paint you put into that first bit of water. So that'll probably do us as a first example. Then you take that and you just put that, lay that down on your sheet as your first little swab, okay? From there, you then need to start to come up in tone to get darker and darker or more intense. So all I'm gonna do is take a little bit more Payne's Gray, just thin it out with the water, and then I can make leave a little gap, otherwise all, the, um, all your little samples are just gonna to bleed together. Just to leave a little gap between them, and then you could drop the next one in. Now, when you put it on your paper, if it doesn't look dark enough, you might need to drop a little bit more color into it, just to sort of darken out a little bit. But don't play around with it, just do it and then put it down. Even if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. So you should be able to get at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight, all right, um, swabs out of this. And when they dry, theoretically, they should all dry slightly darker than the one before it. So I'm just going to do the next one, put a little bit more Payne's Grey in there. And then do the same thing again. So we could put that down a little bit darker. And there we go. Then a bit more Payne's Grey again. So you get the idea. So it's basically you just keep adding a little bit more colour to, um, to the mixture to make it darker. Now, if you did it the other way around and you went from dark to light, which you can do, you just need to make sure you're adding more water rather than more paint to the um, to your puddle of, of um, mixture. Just need to put a bit more color in there. It's not got enough paint. It's not getting dark enough. So a bit darker. And then a bit more paint again. So you might need to start dipping into your, your pan to get it darker because you need more concentrated paint, a bit more. <clears throat> so a bit more color there. And now we're getting into the really dark ones. So you're almost using neat color now. There we go. And then the last one, you can just probably just dip straight into the neat color and then lay that down to get your darkest, darkest dark. Okay, and then you should end up with something similar to that, where you have a, a gradation 
from lightest to darkest. Now with, um, with gray, obviously it's very simple. You know, it's very easy to see that you're just getting darker and darker and darker. Now with some other colors, it's actually quite hard, especially when you're in the very, very light areas like yellow, um, which doesn't have a very large tonal range. I mean, that's nowhere as dark as that. These two are a bit better. I mean, that's a bit easier to see because that's quite dark, that's quite dark, but this is still quite light. So you need to try and, when you're doing this little test, is try to um, reserve the, the neatest color for this last, um, this last sample. So everything else is gonna have water in it and obviously different degrees of water, but this one will have the, um, hardly any water at all in it. And then you should be able to get that gradation. All right, um, quite as orangey as that. And into that, I'm gonna put some cerulean. I'll clean my brush off. So cerulean blue is the lighter of the blues or the lightest of the blues, I should say. Could you use instead of um, raw umber, Stuart? Burnt umber. Um, um, yeah. You, um, well, what brands have you got? I've got burnt umber. Yeah, burnt umber, that's what oh, I've just burnt. used. Sorry. <laughs> Jiffy this morning, sorry. Yeah. That's all right, no worries. So a bit of burnt umber, that'd be fine. Okay, so what you're looking for is sort of a, um, a grey. I'm going to go for a warm grey. So you see at the moment it's a, it's a kind of a bluey grey. And I'm going to, I want to make that a slightly warmer grey. So all I'm going to do is just put a bit more brown in it. Just to warm that grey up. So it's got a little bit more of a, um, a warmth to it. Now if I start using that it's going to be way too strong. So I need to put plenty of water in that. And bearing in mind that we're going into to try and create this as a cloud. So I'm going to take some water first on my big mop brush. Oops, I've got paint on my uh, painting already. Um, so I'm going to use my big mop brush and I'm going to uh, wet. I, Stuart, yeah. Can I just ask, um, so it was brown you mixed together and what other colour? Just brown and um, cerulean. Cerulean blue. Oh, brown and blue. Yeah, just brown and blue. So plenty of water across this top section. I'm going to leave the bottom section dry for the moment. Um, so I'm leaving this area sort of dry just so that the paint doesn't run too far. And I'm just slapping on plenty of water just to keep it nice and moist at the top there. <clears throat> going to lay the board a little bit flatter. Don't want it too steep. Um, which will make the paint not run quite so quickly down the board. And I'm going to take a nice big brush and load up my big brush with the, the mixture that I've just talked about. So this is the, the cerulean and the, um, the burnt umber. Now, this up here, we want it to be very, very pale. And then we want it to start to get darker as we're coming down the, um, the cloud. So I don't wanna put my paint here at the top, otherwise it's gonna get lighter as it kind of comes down. I want it to go the other way around. So I'm gonna actually start to load up, coming down a little bit, the, um, this area, giving it room to be able to move up. So I'm actually gonna tilt the board away from me a little bit. And I want my heel line to kind of wiggle its way across and perhaps a little bit come back this way. So I'm going to tilt the board right down now. So it's now tilted away from me so that that paint can, can go up the board. Let's give it a bit more tilt to get the paint to start to creep up. And you want to be careful with this. Oops, that's giving it too much water. Let's just slow that down. It must have been a bit of a puddle there. And make a bit of water out of out of there so it doesn't run quite so fast. So I'm just going to tilt and get that paint to spread a little bit and you'll notice that the cerulean blue being a heavier colour will sit into the paper or it will get absorbed into the paper. 
um, whereas the brown sort of sitting on top and that's the one the the color that's mainly moving at the moment is the brown so I'm just going to spread that right the way across that top section and then I'm going to tilt it up to get that cloud to have a little bit more of a misty effect there we go it's almost getting there now right the way to the left and then I can also take out the excess if I don't want it on that left hand side before I lay it lay it down so let's just remove some of that excess moisture there we go and then I can actually start to tip the board more vertically again uh, sorry more um, away from me just to get that brown to shift up a little bit further there we go lay it back down now I need to pay some attention to this bottom edge now so I'm going to dip back into my blues and this time I'm going to go into a lighter red so rather than the brown I'm going to use um, like a if you've got oh, um, if you've got like a burnt sienna oops that's too much or um, an English red that's the kind of color we want so it's a bit it will make a slightly stronger warm gray and then I'm going to use that now to start to work into this bottom section of the um, the hill line so let's bring some of this in work it up a little bit into that existing color just to give the impression that there might be some dips or bits of land that are um, up there let's continue that down okay that's enough now i'm going to spray out the bottom i'm going to tilt it a little bit more towards me start to spray out this bottom edge using my spray bottle just to get a really soft bottom edge to those colors that's probably enough get rid of some of this moisture Okay, now, while it's still nice and wet, I'm actually going to start to introduce some other colors in here now. So the first color will not be a departure, it's just going to be more burnt sienna into that same gray mix. So it's still a little bit of blue in there, but not too much. More burnt sienna now. So I'm going to actually start to give myself another sort of gap um, down from those two hill lines. So I'm going to come a bit further down and then start to introduce this colour as part of the moorland. And then maybe it dips down. And perhaps we can bring this a little bit higher. Um, like Stuart, is that on wet or dry? Uh, wet. Is that on wet or wet? Okay. Yeah, it's still wet, yeah. Uh, coming through there. And then a bit stronger again. So now I'm using pretty intense color. So now more brown and a little bit of yellow in it. So more of a, um, a rusty color for the foreground. Leave a few little gaps of light showing through, I think. Because this is really where our big grasses are going to come once we've uh, tipped it back the other way in a minute. In fact, I don't really like mm, that'll be okay. We'll leave that as it is. I don't want to play with it. Let's just bring that colour a little bit higher. I'm just bringing these browns 
up into this other hill line a little bit. Perhaps I could have a little bit running through there as well, just to break that up. Take that out of the picture. Okay, so that's fine. Right, so I need to mop up the edges now. So that's pretty much the, um, the first wash. And I need to let that go off a little bit before I start to bring in some trees while it's still damp. Now, if you find yours is drying out um, a lot, lot quicker, do it in sections. So just do that top part, let it dry, then do the next part and then the next part as you're kind of coming down. Um, you may find that your paper's drying out a bit too fast. Um, let's just give that a bit more tilt. Just want to encourage that paint down a little bit further. Uh, give that a moment and I'm going to tilt it the other way. As we can see, it's pretty bright at the top there now. So I'm going to get a rigger, clean that brush out. So I'm going to get my rigger brush now, which is the um, long, thin one. To start to bring some um, low lying grassy tree type shapes in. So I'm going to use a little bit of indigo. If you don't have indigo, you could use Payne's Grey for this. Um, but I'm going to use some indigo and some um, yellow. A little bit of yellow, not too much. Just want to give it a green tinge. I don't want it to be too green. And this is just to get um, some darker green shapes in at the foreground um, and in different places. So I'm now going to tilt my board because this, this paper is now fairly matte. It's still a little bit moisture in it, but it's fairly matte. I'm actually going to start to drop in some slightly greener, darker, greener shapes to give or break up this larger mass of, of colour. Now these, are, these need to be thicker than the, um, the paint we've already just put on. So don't do these too dilute. They need to be fairly strong if you're going to put them on. Just to break up and give the idea that we've got different directions to the surface of our moorland. So a few there, and then I'm going to run a few. Perhaps we can have that one coming back along this way, down into that, dip down into the valley there. Uh, and then perhaps a few slightly larger pieces. Coming across this front edge area. Few there, couple, couple there. Now I'm going to go and make some brown ones now. So again, some very dark brown ones. So burnt umber and a bit of indigo. I can put a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well to warm it up a bit more. So again, the paint is pretty, pretty thick. Not so much water in it. 
And then this is going to start to build up the some of these grasses in the foreground. And let some of these colours mix while it's still. What still colour was that, Stuart? So this is burnt umber and indigo and a little bit of burnt sienna in it. So a few more of these grasses. Perhaps we'll have it coming up here. Need a few just in this line. Break up the colors that we've got there. Break up this a little bit more as well. I'd link those together. And then I'm going to go for some slightly more, slightly more dilute. So I'm just putting a bit more water in it. Same mix, just a bit more water because I want a few slightly browner marks just in the distance here, not too strong. That's why I've added the water so it's not quite so potent. Just within these blues, I want to add a bit more brown to um, break it up a little bit. And obviously as it goes up into this kind of misty area. We want to just let it disappear really. We don't want to be seeing too much brown up there. Just tinge, tinge the blue with it. Just a tiny bit more. Couple of bits in here. And on this side, I think I need a couple of brown bits, just very soft, because they're quite far away. So a few more down in the foreground here, just to go past the um the halfway point you don't really want it stopping on the halfway point and they even do a little bit of just a little bit of flicking just to add a bit of broken color just in that foreground area just let my finger let the paint come off by tapping the finger Okay, so I'm going to dry that off now, or we'll let that dry, I should say, before we come back and then add um, a touch more detail to it. And really, you don't want to be playing with this too much if you can help it while it's still in this wet stage. It needs to um, just let the paints mix naturally. Um, so I'm going to give that a quick blast with a hairdryer.
Right, okay. So that's now, now dry. So I'm going to actually um, play around with the tone a little bit because I don't think we've got enough for session through here. So I'm going to try and lift a little bit of this blue out um, just to get that to recede a little bit more. It may or may not come out, but I'm going to give it a go. And we'll see if we can just knock the tone down a little bit. I need a bit of tissue and a clean, clean brush with some water in it. And I'm actually just going to wet, re-wet that area. Just agitate the paint a little bit and then blot it. Just to lift off any, any paint that will come off. To knock the area down a touch more. There we go. It's just knocking it down a little bit. But don't want to be rubbing it too hard when you do this lifting out. Um, you have to be a little bit careful. You don't overly do this. It's more a case of just re-wetting the paint and letting the tissue do the work. Take a bit more out through here. Okay. So that's giving me a bit more um, recession in the um, in the that far mountain or far hill line, I should say. Good. Okay. So I now need to add a little bit more tone through this area to push that area back, if you see what I mean. Um, so I'm actually going to re-wet with a clean brush. Uh, this part of the hill line. So just re-adding a bit of moisture, going slightly past the area that I'm going to drop the colour into. So coming down, down a little bit lower. And I'm going to take my blues and greys and browns again. Slightly stronger. It's still grey, but I want it to be a bit, a bit darker. I'm now dropping that into that wet area. Now the wet area was further than this area that I'm now painting, so it gives the room, gives the paint room to spread and to um, move. Otherwise, if you don't give you enough room you'll end up having a line. So here I need to just mop up this edge so we don't end up with a line there. Bit more of that dark coming down. Let's tilt the board a little bit more, the glares. Can't really see what I'm doing. A bit more brown, I think. Down into this valley. And then up behind my this side and then away. Okay, and I think we'll just soften all that off in there and over there. Take my tissue, just mop up the bottom edge, and then I'll let that I'll let that dry. Just need to see if that's got enough tone in it now. So I need to add a bit more actually just in here. So what I did there, if you don't know, is I just stepped away from the painting just to look at it from a slight distance. It's always good to look at your work from a bit further away just to see whether um, it is working or not. If you're always sitting on top of your work, sometimes you can't really appreciate how these, how these colours or what you're actually doing is, 
is working because normally when you see a painting you don't actually see a painting from the distance you paint it at you normally look at it from a from a few feet away so by stepping back from the painting it's a very very good practice to um, to actually see whether you're doing um, or what you're doing is is working or not I'm just going to manipulate that colour in and around those trees or bushes, whatever you want to call them. Okay, touch more brown here just to pull that into the foreground. Leave some of that other colour showing through. Just pull that down a little more. And then I'm going to let that just dry. It's a bit of a line now, I want to get rid of that. Okay, so I need, need to dry that off before I put in some more little trees. Okay, so just some few final bits of detail and then this one will be done. So what I'm going to do now is just add a few more potent pieces of colour just to brighten up the foreground. So I'm just dipping straight into some neat burnt sienna. So on my rigger brush here is just neat burnt sienna. And I'm just going to have another brush with some moisture in it. So just a little bit of water. And I'm looking to just bring some of these scrubland pieces. So I'm just going to put some water down. Tip the board away from me. So the, the top of the board is lower. And then I'm just going to start to touch a few of these spots to let that paint come off into that moisture to create um, a very soft top and perhaps a tree look. So let's do that again. Let's make that grow a little bit larger. Make those trees a bit bigger. Okay, let's do the same on this side, have a couple of, couple of those. Going to make the bit of moisture a bit larger this time, give it more room to spread. Same thing, just dip into some neat burnt sienna. And I'm touching the dry area outside of the moisture and letting the paint creep up into that wet, wet spot. So that you keep a nice soft top um, and you can give the, the structures some, some uh, detail at the bottom. 
little bit more in there. And then perhaps the odd strong bit of colour down in the foreground, just on the dry paper, just to link it together so we don't have isolated colour. Okay, and then finally, just going to give a few little white spots on my sheep. So just dipping straight into some um, white gouache or white, whatever you've got, white paint wise. And then I'm just going to have a few little dots, not too big. Just here and there, just to give the impression of something in the distance. And I know they're not exactly white, but the white will help to just break up some of this larger area of colour. And that will do. So I'm going to start off by bringing this onto the dry paper in a very thin, thin wash. Coming down, down the paper. Got a bit of hair there. And this is going to get some yellow down to it. So a little bit of yellow now. Transparent yellow into that same wash back to the blues. So just dipping into some yellow, dipping into some blue, just a variation. A bit more blue. Coming down this left hand side. And then back to the yellow again, a bit stronger because we're coming down a little bit lower now. But closer to us. Run that through a bit more blue <clears throat> on this side. And I'll just let those colours just trickle down. Okay, now <clears throat> let's lift off that from the edge there. So what I need to do now is to start to introduce the foreground colours into that. So I'm going to drop in, uh, dip into some indigo, and in that indigo I'm going to put some transparent yellow. So this is indigo and transparent yellow in this mix. And I'll be dipping into some browns and that kind of thing, but this is thicker colour now. So a little bit flatter with my board. So I'm going to start to bring in some trees and some shapes in this sort of area, which is going to get pulled down in a moment. But this is just about building in the shape. We'll miss a bit and then we'll have some more darker shapes over here. And then below that is going to go more burnt sienna. So I'm now dipping into burnt sienna. So I'm going to start to pull that colour down now into the foreground using these burnt sienna -y type colours all the way down on this left hand side. Pull a bit of that up into the trees. And then I need to go stronger still, so I'm going to put some yellow into that burnt sienna. So coming down, and then the actual morning kind of goes down quite steeply on this left hand side. And then we're going to cut back with a 
So I'm just going to spray out the, the bottom down here. Because I don't want to try and paint the bottom section all in one go. And now I need to let that um, dry off a bit. So let's just mop up the excess the excess colours. <clears throat> soak all that dilute solution just start to bring that into that moisture it's going to be sort of a bank a bank of trees there that sort of comes over down from the out of the picture so just using some water I'm going to soften that edge And then we've got another bank, small bank, just on the edge of the picture there. A little bit more of the blue. And just a few dips and dots here and there to break up that edge. A few spots there. And then coming down the hillside got some more of these bluey greys and just a bit more water just to manipulate those colours a bit so we're going to bring these down towards the left of the picture so it comes down as a dip And then up and over. Might even give that a little spray. Just to keep it nice and soft. Back to the blues. <clears throat> so continue this down. A couple more broken bits here and there and then we've got this sort of line which is the almost crease within the land that comes down behind the main tree bank sort of dips and back up just a few more lines down the bottom there Sort of another one in the middle, just to break that up. And again, give that a little spray. Keep it soft. <clears throat> now I'm going to dry that off and then get into the middle of your trees. that's now dry so for the next part I'm going to start to block in the, um, the tree line so the tree line is going to sort of come down through here a bit larger than the reference so I'm going to bring in again some water just undulate the trees through that original dark area from the first wash and then it kind of comes down to the bank there and then I'm going to bring some more trees just here more tree shapes and then out of the picture so um, with my rigger I will go into some indigo and some of the transparent yellow and a bit of burnt sienna so those three colours together Tipping the board away, I'm going to start off touching just at a point to get the tree to start to grow. 
I might even dip into a pipette here. Just to get a bit more colour in there. Just sucking up a bit of colour off my palette. Pull down some of that colour in different places just to break up and give a more of an organic look to the tree line. Mix up a bit more colour. So some more of the indigo, some of the burnt sienna, some of the yellow. Dragging the colour down in the base. <clears throat> A little bit over here. In this tree line. The tree's a bit higher. break up the top edge of that tree formation where it's meeting the edge of the water just using the pipette just to break into the dry okay let's tip that back down Come around a little bit. I'm going to pull these down with grasses and bits of scrubland. And <clears throat> so I'm not really adding paint here, I'm just manipulating the colour that's already there over the top of the existing wash, trying to leave some little holes and gaps within the colour that I'm pulling down. Break up this edge a little bit more with my finger. Okay, now I need to change the colour. So it's more neat burnt sienna now. A tiny bit of red in there as well. A bit of yellow to warm it up. And then again, just start to lay some of that colour on. <clears throat> so using the brush to give me a bigger a larger area of mass of the colour but again trying to not lose all of those nice little holes that we've just created so the land sort of starts to dip over so 
I'm just going to cut in here, leaving some little gaps, which will start to become like grass and that kind of thing. Just start to angle this down, make some longer grasses shrubs and bushes and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Link those colours into there. Now I'm going to dip into some burnt, uh, sorry, some um, cerulean blue. blue. Just some cerulean blue. Just to start to bring a bit of a colour change into the foreground. And then bring this back in this direction. Give it a spray just to break up the edge. So the spray bottle is very, very good at creating organic shapes. <coughs> Let that run for the moment. <clears throat> so a bit more of the blue. Just coming in from this left hand side. Tap the brush onto my finger just to get a bit of spatter as well. A bit more organic kind of application of the paint. Very little, very little water in this, and I'm holding the brush on the side just so I can get a bit of surface texture. And I'm just going to drag some of this into the foreground. Just as broken colour. A few bits here and there. Just to indicate some of the colourful header. Finally, a few spots of yellow, a little bit of gouache yellow. And again, just drag a bit of that on, just straight from the tube. Just want to hit a few 
spots just to give it a bit more colour. And then the last thing, just a few little white spots for the sheet. So dipping into some neat white, <clears throat> or maybe just have some little indications of not really drawing the actual sheet, but just some whiter notes within this heathland, and then perhaps up on the, the moorland up here we can have some lower little white dots. one a little bit higher up they seem to go in clusters <clears throat> 